Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Coach Rock here from Revenge Basketball, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you seven separation moves that you can use to create more space on the basketball court against tougher defenders. None of us like being guarded closely by tough defenders. It just sucks, right? I mean, that was one thing I hated when I was growing up, was dealing with guys that were good defenders, they were quick, they were strong, and they guarded me close because it's tough to get where you wanna get, it's tough to do what you wanna do on the court, unless you have moves that can create that quick separation. And then they're always trying to recover, and then they're at your mercy, and then you can embarrass them. So until I really developed good moves, I hated it. But once I developed good moves, I loved it. I prayed that people guard me close because I would just blow by them or be able to blow by them, pull back, and really just destroy them offensively. And I would love in games when teams that didn't know who I was or didn't know our team would guard us close on defense and our whole team could pretty much break down defenders. And after the first like two or three minutes of the game, the team would back off, whether it's into a light man-to-man, um, -man, just not as close or into a zone because they couldn't guard us man-to-man. -man. So that being said, I wanna show you some moves that can really help you dominate when, no matter who's guarding you, all right? Now the first move is a simple move out of the triple threat. It's a side jab. I love having the moves be basic because no move is gonna work if you can't do it properly, if you struggle to do it. So the first one is a side jab. Now we all know the straight jab. Straight jab, jabs are great. I always teach a player first to jab at his man because a lot of times it can make your man back up and give you opportunity to hit the three. So a regular jab can create space but I found that you can probably create even more space with a little side jab. The reason why is because with a straight jab, very rarely are you gonna drive at the defender like straight at him. Usually, if you drive by somebody, you're taking a little side angle. So that's why the side jab, it really simulates me attacking like I'm driving rather than just going straight at him like that. Now again, I'm not saying that jab at him isn't effective, it is. But for here, for creating the space, I would prefer the little side jab. Again, because it simulates me catching the ball, blowing by. Now he's like, okay, he can blow by. Boom, and I don't blow by. So the side jab does a lot of things for me. And all you do here, catch. Make sure when you catch the ball, you already have your left foot planted or else you're gonna get called for a travel if you do this. You will get called for travel. So make sure you have that pivot foot. You're here, boom. With this, I'm not only just jabbing, I'm putting my whole body into it. So here, head. The head is very important. You want your head to move with this because that simulates driving. If I'm just here, my defender's not gonna think I'm driving because when I drive, I go like this. So ball, head, leg, everything in that direction. Then you come back here. Boom, then you come back. So that's the first move, side jab. Very easy move to add to your game. You just have to get the rhythm down. So first, just practice getting the footwork down, the rhythm, because it's not just like this. It's a type of move, all right? Now piggybacking off of the last move, which I love to do because these moves work very well together. This is one of my favorite triple threat moves is using the crossover out of it. Because here you'll probably create the space with that jab. But sometimes it's hard to move. Usually this side jab is great for a shot or like a dribble like that. But it's still, you see that time it takes a boom boom now it does allow you to push hard off the back foot so you can get blow by your defender but another thing i like to do out of that side jab so it's a mixture of that side jab first but we're crossing over so it's boom so again make sure you keep this back foot on the ground boom and you're crossing over so you're getting the same effect of the side jab where you're freezing them but you're crossing over and it gives you an easier opportunity to blow by a defender or get into another one of our moves, which I'm gonna get into next, is a 
simple step back or any of the moves I talk about today. A lot of them can be used out of this and don't worry, I'll show you that. Now, next we have the escape dribble. Now you're not really gonna see the escape dribble used in a really attacking scenario where you're attacking somebody in the half court. This is really used just to create space. I mean, this video is about separation moves and there's not a, a better move that creates as much space. Now, of course, because you're moving backwards, it's not the best move to use maybe like up here, but if somebody's guarding you close, this works great, full court pressure, half court pressure. When you need a quick, just get away to maybe be able to pass the ball, maybe to be able to split a double team, the best thing you can do is this retreat dribble. Boom, boom. So notice what I do with the ball too. I kind of like in and out it because it helps you. You could just go like this, but it doesn't, you're not gonna be able to get as much, cover as much space. So let's look at it. If I'm here, let's kind of go by this, this thing right here, this line right here. If I do a regular retreat dri dribble, I can get about here. So that's still decent space. I don't know how much that is exactly, but if I go here, Look how much space I get. Same amount of dribbles, but much more space. I mean, that's almost double the amount I got. So if you're in a full court, this is great. Or if you're in a half court and your man's guarding you close, you can get that space. He'll be running at you, right? And that opens the door because he's trying to recover and he's trying to get that, close that space back up. When he's running at you, you can attack, you can cross, a lot of different things you can do. So that retreat dribble is, you can see it's a great separation move, but it might not be the best move if you're one-on-one -on -one right here, you wouldn't just wanna go, your defender would probably just like let you do that. But if you're getting pressure, this is a great move to do. Now this is a great move you can do off the dribble. It's a simple sidestep. You'll see guys like James Harden, Damian Lillard, they all have their own variations of this. I'm not gonna get into too many different variations of it. I'm gonna just do the simple sidestep where you're here, and you're stepping to the side. You could do both, either hand, but it, this isn't really a step back. It's like a diagonal step or a straight up. I think it's always kind of a little diagonal, but the thing is most defenders, the reason it works so well is if it's so quick, most defenders are used to you attacking or going back. So when you're here about to attack and then you quickly step to the side, it's kind of shocking for them. And they're always behind, they're always one step behind you. That's a great way to create quick separation for your jump shot, or just to create the space you need where you can go here, and then you can do something with your shot. So that's the sidestep, great move. Now I'll run through these next few moves because they are very similar. And we've talked about them on this channel. We have the step back, the punch drag, and the pullback. All these are optimal separation moves. You'll see the best players in the NBA, they do these moves all the time. So the first one, step back, is pretty self-explanatory. I think this is the standard. Like if you wanna be a great scorer, you have to have a good step back move in your game. Basic step back that I'm talking about here is where you're attacking hard, and you're just stepping back right there. You can go both directions here, step back, Basic step back move, great separation move, pretty much self-explanatory how to do it. And it's pretty much known, that's a great separation move. Now the next one that has become more popular over the past few years um, is the punch drag. So what we're doing here is you're attacking, right? And then you're stopping on a dime. The reason it's great at creating space is because when you're driving past the defender, you got him on your hip, he's trying to stay in front of you. You can quickly just stop right there and he keeps going. And you can hit the shot. Damian Lillard's very good at this, going both right or left. But very simple, very simple to do. All you're doing is pounding the ball on your ankle right there. So you don't want it too far up front. You don't want to do it up here. You want to keep the ball protected right there. And then, of course, we have the pullback. Everybody knows the pullback, boom. So we're attacking, pulling back. Great separation move. Iverson did this all the time. Chris Paul does it all the time to create space. Very simple move, very effective. 
Now what I talked about earlier that I wanted to come back to is how you can do all these moves kind of together, those, especially those last three that I talked about. Let's say I'm in this side, that, remember that side jab crossover we did in the beginning? Well, I can hit somebody with that, right? And while they're trying to recover, I can step back. Or while they're trying to recover, hit them with that lunge dribble. Or I usually wouldn't do the pullback with my weak hand because it brings, it just doesn't feel right for me. I would stick to, if I'm going left with this move, I stick to that punch dribble or step back. If I'm going right, strong hand, I don't like doing the step back going right because it's difficult to shoot out of that. So if I went this way, I could do punch drag. That's the beauty of the punch drag. Easy to do with either hand at a many different situations. You could punch drag, boom, or I can cross, pull back. Now when it comes to working on these moves or any moves, I get questions from players like, how do I work on this stuff? I've been starting to implement the exact way I do it with my players or by myself. It's just simply having three cones up top and going through each move with each hand at each cone. So I'll just run through a, a few of them for you. I'm not gonna go through every move, each hand, but you'll kind of get the idea of how I do it. So I would start, I talked about this in one of the previous videos, but I would start, let's say right hand with, let's say I'm doing the right hand pullback. I would start with the right hand pullback at each cone. Boom, middle cone, right cone, left cone. Then switch to maybe a left hand pullback just to practice it even though I don't do it as much. And then I'll move on to the next thing. Um, you can still even work on things like the retreat dribble. You could just retreat at each cone with each hand and then get into an attack where you're either mixing in a hezzy pull, a crossover, or some sort of attack move. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do one of these moves at each cone just so you can see how I approach the cone. But remember, you would be doing each move at each cone with each hand. And you don't move to the next cone until you make one. So let me show you how I would do something like the retreat dribble. We could be here, retreat, two, then we get into attack, maybe a hezzy, and then a shot. Now let's say this side right here, I'm gonna do a side jab cross into a punch drag. Ready? So be here, boom. And again, I would practice that move at each cone with both hands. Now let's say I'm just gonna work on the side jab into a shot. So here, boom, create that space, hit the shot. So there you have it. If you found today's video helpful and you're looking to take your game to the next level, just visit our website, revengebasketball.com, or I'll put the link in the comments for you. That'll take you to our website, take you to some free training so you can continue to improve your game and keep getting better every single day. If you enjoyed the video, do me a big favor, hit the thumbs up for me, scroll down, comment below, let me know what else you need help with. Anything you need, you know I got you. I literally get the majority of my ideas from things you guys leave in the comments. I think one player left like 15 videos in the comments for me to do, and I've been trying to knock them out because they were all great ideas and I know it's content that a lot of you guys probably need. So definitely don't hesitate to comment down below. Last but not least, please do not forget to hit, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss another video. Until next time, I'll see you then.